It's Raging Raptor here and I welcome you to a new World of Tanks preview video and today we have the T-34-E, uh, upcoming tier 5 Russian premium tank and maybe you already know it from War Thunder, but it is basically an up-armored variant of the T-34. So I guess it is time that we have a look at this tank. Right now we do not yet have the damage model so it's a little bit of speculation, but I think with this tank it's pretty darn easy to actually know for sure how this armor is because it <laughs> it's really clear about how the armor is. It's a T-34 with armor plates on top of it. So let's see what Wargaming is saying about the T-34-E. Up armor is one of the projects created to improve the armor of the T-34 mass-produced tanks. This particular variant of up armoring was developed under the leadership of I Burcheva or Burcheva. I don't know. I don't know how you pronounce Russian names. You know, it's not Bliadia Raptor here. During polygon tests, and if you know what a polygon test is, please let me know. I don't know. And tests carried out by the Red Army, it showed high efficiency against 37mm and 50mm anti-tank gun. guns. Unfortunately, it was ineffective when using 88mm and even 75mm rounds. The test samples were nevertheless sent to the front. Oh no, when they were tested on the in the battle. Oh, okay. I made a little mistake here in the German video. I said that they never went to the battle. Oops, I made a small mistake there. Gotta fix that. From the look of it, it has spaced armor. Remember that the characteristics of these vehicles are being tested at the moment and each of the parameters listed below may change. So, as you probably guess, it's a T-34-3 a T-34E with, well, better armor. So I guess it is the best idea to actually just have a look or rather compare this tank to the T-34. Right now we are using the big gun, but to make it, to be honest, to make it fair, we would need to use the small gun, the 76 mm F-34. But, but with that, we're going to look at it just in a second. Right now this tank has 500 hit points, which is 50 hit points more than a T-34 and an engine with 500 horsepower, which is exactly the same as, the, as its tier 5 counterpart. But the bad thing about this tank is it is heavier. Obviously it has more armor, what do you guess? 32 tons is the weight and 15.67 HP to ton ratio. while the nice T-34 has 17.15, meaning it's quite the mobile tank going around the field. The top speed stays the same, it's 56 km per hour forward and 20 km per hour backwards. So yeah, there is not much which is going to change there. The whole traverse speed is 46 de uh, 36 degrees per second. And well, this is almost, well not almost, it's around 5 degrees slower than the one on the T-34. And the third traverse speed is also 36 degrees per second. And that's a whole 13 degrees per second slower than the one on the standard tier 5 tank. But this is logical, it has a lot more armor smacked onto it. The terrain resistance values, though, they stay the same, which is a little bit funny in my opinion, if you think about it. Because let's be honest, it is heavier, it has more armor, so how the hell are those values the same? But I guess they're just for balancing issues. But there's the same with, with 1.5, 1.25 and 2.21. Other than that, the view range is 340 meters, which is 10 meters less, and the radio range is 575, but usually no, you don't really care about that. Even though, um, where is it, the radio range of this vehicle is exactly the same. It carries the exactly the same radio. So to the armor, we, as already said, we don't yet have the armor model. So we need to improvise a little bit. It has the stock turret. So we got to watch out for that. The, the top turret of the T-34 has 52 millimeters of armor, which is actually pretty darn decent all around, except for the back. But the stock turret only has 45 degrees of armor. So, okay, oh well. But now comes the interesting part. The whole armor is 45 millimeters on the front, which is the same, it stays the same. 40 plus 16 on the side and 40 on the back. So how does this look like? This is how it looks like. 
It has those thick armor plate, those 60 millimeters of armor plates strapped to its side, as you can see here, meaning that here we have an additional 16 millimeters of armor. So if you want to say it like that, it is kind of like the BTSV in that kind of sense. As you can see, it has also 20 millimeters of spaced armor. Well, okay, this one has only 60 millimeters, but it, it is like the SBTSV having quite the nice little additional side armor. Not on the front though, the front will still the same. So you gotta watch out what you're doing. You should not drive out frontally. But what you can do with this vehicle, in my opinion, or my holy opinion, is you can try to sight or get out into a decent side scraping position where you have like 80 mm like you can even angle it a little bit more because let's be honest here you not only have you only have 40 millimeters yes but you have an additional 60 millimeters giving it around 56 millimeters of side armor which is pretty darn decent in my personal opinion so let's see um, we can actually try to recreate something this is around a 45 degree angle so almost perfect so um, let's see if we can get a tank with um, around 60 millimeters of side armor. I know for sure that the Amex M454 has 60 millimeters of side armor. So let's try to recreate the 45 degree roughly. You have 75 millimeters of armor then instead of 56 millimeter, but it's spaced armor. Plus, you don't need to forget this is a almost 90 degree angle but here it is really nicely sloped so we probably need to look at it like from below so this tank probably has around well let's say it's 80 millimeters of side armor effective side armor which is pretty darn impressive for a tier 5 medium tank in my opinion and you can see those plates are going all the way to the back. The back is the same though, like there's not much going to change and it looks like there's a little... What is that? Did somebody uh, lost their tree branch in there? But you can see when we are comparing the butts of those tanks, mm, such beautiful butts, let's be honest here. Visual, you can see that those um, little bolts here, they stay roughly the same, so there should not be additional armor plates on top. You can see also those, um, I, I don't know, what is this called in English? I know how it's called in German, This not joints maybe? No, not joints really, but you know what I mean. Those parts here, they're also the same, so on the butt there won't be any changes, and um, that's also how we can see it right here. 40 millimeters, it stays the same. The turret armor will be, as already said, it will be the stock turret with its 45 millimeter of armor. So that's a little bit meh on the front. But it has, as you probably saw already, all around those 60 millimeter armor plates. And when we look at the tank frontally, you can see that this will be actually pretty impressive of a turret armor. When we are resetting this once again... And having a look at the tank frontly, just need to, there we go. You can see that, um, let's also look at the visual model so it's a little bit easier to compare. You can see only this small part here is um, without spaced arm and you can see it can go from 45 millimeter to up to almost 100 millimeter. So, and out to ricochet angles. The gun mantlet is not that good. We, we are going to use the small gun. So we have the exactly same gun mantlet for some reason, wish well. A collision model, we go back to the collision model. You can see this part is only 45 millimeter thick, this one right here. So, oh, excuse me, not 45, it's, um, depends where you hit actually, you can see. On the lower part, it's twice 45 millimeters, on the upper part, it's uh, 45 to 50 to 80 millimeters thick. So the gun mantlet will be the weak spot of this vehicle, especially this fat part of the gun mantlet to stabilize or hold the gun, I think. And the rest of the gun mantle is pretty darn thick. And you can see just this small part right here, this wedge here is the weak part of the turret in that kind of sense. And obviously the lower part right down here. Oops, where did it go? There we are. But that shouldn't be big of a problem because let's be honest, this will be all covered in spaced armor expect as except for this smaller part right there or right down there. So 
that's not a big of a problem in my opinion. Plus this tank apparently has 8 degrees of gun depression, not those lousy 6 degrees, so this will be even better. The only small weak spots will probably be back here where you have this small hole which is only 45 millimeters thick instead of 45 plus 60 millimeters thick. But when we look at the tank from the side, it will be really effective against HE spamming tanks on tier 5. Like Panzer 4 H, like M4 Sherman, like Hetzer even. All those tanks will have a pretty hard time penetrating the sidearm or doing significant damage because this, um, those side skirts will do or will absorb a lot of damage. Plus, if we look at the tank from the back, you can see, yes, those side armor plates on the track, so side skirts won't be 16 millimeters thick, but I think around 5 millimeters additional armor. So you have here, this part here will also be covered in spaced armor. Oh, um, I don't want to finish, get away this one. So yeah, it will be pretty darn strong against HE guns. So... But how is the gun performing on this vehicle? As you probably saw already, I put on the, the F-34 gun, which is exactly this gun. But in my opinion, I think Wargaming finally understood that nobody wants to play something like the M4 improved with 92 millimeters of penetration in a tier 7 game. <laughs> they actually gave it a special name, the 1943, uh, 43, yes, and it has more penetration than the standard the um, 76mm F434 gun. I, I really like this approach. It makes this tank, I guess, much more fun to play. Um, the sad part is, though, when we compare now this gun, the real gun, with this gun, you can see th the damage stays the same. The penetration goes up by a lot, as you can see from 86 millimeters to 120 and from 102 for premium rounds to 150. The DPM even goes up by almost 400, which is a lot in my opinion. The reload time is 3.8 seconds. The accuracy is better with 0.43 instead of 0.46. The aim time stays the same at 2.3 seconds. And you can see, even though we use the stock turret, we have 8 degrees of gun depression, which is pretty darn nifty. This tank has with the stock turret only 6 degrees. To compare it, this is 6 degrees. When we now take the big turret, we can go all the way down to 8 degrees, which is actually pretty cool. But now, what do we have different guns on the tier 5 counterpart? We have the, this, um, the S54, which is a 76mm gun as well, with 115 damage, which is 5 damage or alpha damage more, 125mm of AP penetration, which is 5mm more, and 156 millimeters of APCR penetration, which is 6 millimeters more. But, oh my god, look at that DPM, it get butchered down. Like, we have here 500 DPM more, that's so much more. The aim time is better and the accuracy is comparable. It's worse, but it's comparable. Other than that, we can use the CIS-4 gun, and you can see this gun goes way and beyond with the DPM. 2300 DPM, if you can actually use that gun to a good extent, it's awesome, because the DPM is so amazing. You can see the penetration rate is lower with 112 millimeters compared to the 120, but the APCR penetration is much better, 190 almost, compared to the 150. The cool part about the T-34E is that it is a perfect crew trainer. It has a commander, a radio operator, a driver and a loader. That's the perfect crew layout for your tier 10 medium tanks. So that's awesome. That's really darn awesome. Uh, except I think I made a small mistake there as well. Let's have a quick look comparing it with a tank like the... Where is it? Object 140? I think I made... Yes, okay, I, it's not the, okay. I made another small mistake. I need to change that as well in my German video. The com there is a radio operator while the, the commander is the radio man. So it's not the perfect crew train. I'm sorry, that's, that's not how it is. I made a small mistake. There. It's four crew members, that's okay. But you can see you have a driver, a loader, that's the same, but you don't have a gunner. The commander is the gunner. While on the tier 10 vehicle, you have the radio man on the commander position. And while here, you don't have it. So... Well, we are a little bit out of luck there. Well, let's see if we, we have other tanks. No, on tier 10, you it, it won't be a really good crew trainer, to be honest. Okay, I'm sorry, I need to change it as well. But overall, I think the tank, I don't know, it looks strong. It really looks strong compared to the T-34. So, 
I really don't know yet if um, it will be simply better or comparable. It looks amazing though. I really think it will be a fun tank to play with this uh, additional armor. It will be something like the Thunderbolts armor side screens, so that's cool. But I don't know yet how strong it really will be. If it's straight up power creep in the old T-34. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching and good luck on the battlefield. Bye bye.